Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are continuing our trigonometry and Pythagoras' theorem series by looking exact values of trigonometry. And we are going to look at something called the hand trick today. This is available on a number of different providers across YouTube, but it wouldn't be the right thing for me to do to not include it in our series as well. So let's see if I can do it justice. So if we think back to our last video, when we looked at exact values and we derived those using a triangle, now, memorizing a table, especially a table with as much going on as this, could be very complicated. Certainly could be done. You could definitely print it out, stick it on your bathroom wall and write it over and over and over again until you get it 100% right. You could also take the time to draw the triangles as well. But sometimes we want a better way to be able to memorize the information here so that we can use it quickly. Now, before I take you through this simple thing called the hand trick, we're going to actually transform this table that we've got here by rationalizing the denominator of our thirds, and that way the hand trick will work. Now, if you're not sure about what it means by rationalizing the denominator, I'm just going to quickly show you these three thirds here. Two of them are the same, which is the sine and cosine of 45 degrees. But you'll notice that there is a third on the bottom, root two and root of three. So what we're going to do is transform those fractions so that they have whole numbers on the denominator not thirds. So firstly we're going to take 1 over root 2 and if we multiply that by the denominator root 2 over root 2 which is basically we're multiplying it by the number 1 in the form of root 2 over root 2 what we're going to get across the top because when we multiply two fractions we multiply the tops and then we multiply the bottoms. So 1 times root 2 gives me just root 2. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2 so now we have a rational denominator and we can replace that in our table. Let's do the same with 1 over root 3. Multiply that by the denominator root 3 on root 3 which is just 1. So we're not actually changing it, we're basically finding an equivalent fraction. And then we're going to end up with root 3 on the top and 3 on the bottom. So now we've transformed our table and that means when we go to use our exact values using the hand trick, the hand trick's going to work. So it doesn't work with a with a table of values where we don't have a rational denominator. Okay, so what is this hand trick I'm talking about? So let's focus on sign firstly, and I want you to grab your hand and hold it in front of your face so that you see exactly as you see the picture on the screen. You're going to have your palm facing you and your pinky finger is going to be pointing down. Now we're going to actually give values to each of these. So our pinky finger is going to be zero and then we go up from there 30 degrees 45 degrees 60 degrees and our thumb is always going to be 90 degrees and so an easy way to think of that is is that when your hand when your fingers are together your hand makes a right angle so that's an easy way to remember that the thumb is 90 degrees okay let's split those out now we've got a formula you do need to memorize something and that is a formula for all of the sine exact values and the formula is we're going to hold down the finger that we're looking for for the exact value we want to find and the formula is the number of fingers underneath that finger the square root of that divided by two so let me show you how it works firstly for sine of zero so if i hold that finger in which i'm not very flexible can't do that easily but i have no fingers underneath zero so the top of my um, formula will be zero square root of zero over two and we know that just makes zero so that means that the um, sine of zero is going to be zero okay let's do that with our ring finger okay so we hold that one in and we've got one finger underneath the square root of one over two now we know the square root of one is just one so that means that the sine of 30 degrees is a half let's do the same with our middle finger now um, sine 45 so the number of fingers underneath is two so that'll be root two over two sine of 60 now is going to be the number of fingers underneath square root of three over two and our last one is our sign our thumb if we hold our thumb down we have four fingers underneath square root of four which is two over two so that is going to become two over two which simplifies as a fraction to just the number one so the sign of 90 is one so that's all our exact values using our hand get your left hand face it towards you remember start from the bottom zero 30, 45, 60, and 90. Now, to find cosine exact values, you keep the, the hand in exactly the same position, but the formula changes. Notice if we go back one, it was the square root of the number of fingers underneath, 
and divided by two. This time it's the square root of the number of fingers above the finger divided by two. So if you can just remember sine is underneath, cosine is above. Okay, so let's start again with zero, our pinky finger. If we hold that one in, then we're gonna have the square root of four fingers above that finger, which is going to be the square root of four on two, which we know once again, simplifies to two on two and one. And basically, all of the values that we had all the way up for sine, it's going to be in reverse for cosine. That's an easy thing to remember as well. But just need to know how to use the rules. Okay, cosine of 30. Once again, number of fingers above that one there. If I hold that one in, I've got three fingers available above. Square root of that is a third divided by two. So it's just root three on two. Middle finger, number of fingers above is two. So then I've got the square root of two over two again. And then we've got cosine of 60. So I've got one finger above, which my thumb really. And so that's going to be square root of one over two, which is a half. And then we get to cosine of 90. If I hold my thumb in, I've got no fingers above zero over two just gives me zero. So that's our cosine exact value. So you can see this quick little trick. I've taught it to students. They actually seem to remember this one pretty well. And I often see them sitting in the exam doing things like this and working it out for themselves. So all you need to do is memorize the two formulas and you can basically find sine and cosine of all of those key important angles. Now, tan's a little bit trickier. 10 is number of fingers above square root divided by the square root of the number of fingers, um, sorry, below and then above. Now, easy way to remember this is, well, below is just switched with above. So you would naturally think that below should be on the bottom and above should be on the top. Just remember this is in reverse. So keep your hand in the exact same position. I have seen other videos where they flip the hand and they keep the still the, the positions there, but they go with the above and below, maybe because the formula is easier to remember if it's above and below. I actually personally find it easier just to keep my hand in the same position for sine, cosine, and tan. And we've just got the formula is reversed. So that's a little sidetrack there. So tan of zero, let's start again in the same one here. This time I have got no fingers below, and that means that's a zero over the square root of four fingers above, so the square root of zero over the square root of four, well, we know that's just going to be zero. So that 10 of zero is zero. 10 of 30, so hold this one in again. I've got one finger below, square root of one is just gonna be one, and I've got three fingers above. So it's gonna be the square root of one over the square root of three, which is just one over root three. 10 of 45, so this time, I'm gonna have two fingers above, two fingers below, root two on root two is just one. So tan 60, I'm gonna hold in my pointer finger this time, the number of fingers below is three, so it's gonna be the square root of three over fingers above, which is one, so it's gonna be square root of three over square root of one, and we know that square root of one is just one, so it's just going to be root three. And the last one is 1090, so if I hold my thumb down now, I've got four fingers below, so that's gonna be the square root of four, and I've got no fingers above, so that's going to be root four over root zero, and we know we cannot do a division divided by zero, so that means it's going to be an undefined result. So that's how we find our tan one. So if you can remember the, memorize those three formulas for your table, then you are able to remember memorize everything inside that table like a piece of cake. And a good way to remember that as well, if you look at our formula here, if I just get my mouse there, okay, so number of fingers below, square root of that is sine, number of fingers above is cosine, so our formula for tan is just our sine um, numerator over our cosine denominator, so that's a nice easy way as well, sine on top of cosine, and we usually do Sokotoa in that order anyway, so sine and cosine is a good way to remember the order here. Like I said as well, it's just the opposite of what you think it should be. Below is above and above is below. Well, I hope you found this helpful. And just always remember, pinky, always zero. Thumb, always 90. Palm facing towards you with your thumb up. 
Remember that makes a 90 degrees. That's an easy way to remember that that's 90 degrees. Keep your hand in that same position for all three rules and you've got it all memorized. So if that was helpful to you, then why not tell somebody? You could tell a friend, get them to watch the video so they can prepare for the exam as well. Tell your teacher about this video so they can show the class. You could tell other viewers in the comments or even tell us um, in an email if you found it was helpful. If you've got any questions, best place to comment on those is mcclutchymass at yahoo.com or you can reach us on Instagram and Facebook Messenger as well. Thank you so much for all of our returning viewers and subscribers. It's such a pleasure to have you here at the channel. You've been watching McClutchy Mass. Do join us coming up. We're going to be looking at unit circle and also um, the graphing of sine, cosine and tan as well as getting to some senior calculus work. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day. See you later.